Hi guys and welcome to the practice number three in our course. In this practice we're going to create a data guard broker configuration. We will go through hands-on tutorial to create Oracle data guard broker configuration. The appliances we're going to create in this practice will take about 70 GB of disk space. The data guard configuration specifications will be the same as the specifications of the database that we created in the previous practice. The only difference is that by the end of this lecture, we will have a data guard configuration where the broker will be the management interface rather than the SQL plus. This practice has two phases. In the first phase, we're going to prepare the practice environment. We're going to make a copy of the practice one physical standby folder. And then we're going to configure the broker in the data guard configuration. All the procedure that we have learned in the concepts lecture will be implemented in our practice. So first I have to make a copy of the folder practice one physical standby. And then I'm going to rename it to practice three configure the broker. I've already made a copy of practice one physical standby directory. I'm just going now to rename it. Practice three, configure the broker. I will copy the path and open it in the virtual box software. I'll open the two databases, the primary database and the physical standby database. And start up both machines. After I started up the machines, I created two putty sessions to connect to both of them. As you remember, the session with the white font will be used to connect to the primary database and the session with the green font will be used to connect to the standby database. I will switch to Oracle user and check the status of the database. In my case, the database is not running, so I need to start it up. I started up the database. I would verify that it is running. Yes, the database is running. I would do the same in the standby database. It's not running, so I have to start it up. So, so far I have uh, made a copy of the practice one physical standby database. I opened the two appliances in the virtual box and I started the appliances and the database in them. Now I need to test the connections to all the databases. Yeah, it worked fine. And I also tried to connect to the standby database, it worked fine. Do the same testing in the standby database. All sounds good. Now in both databases, we need to create the necessary directories for saving the broker configuration files. In our case, we will save the configuration files in data disk group and FRA disk group. So I will switch as a grid in each database and create the directories in the disk groups. Do the same in the standby database. I 
After creating the directories, I need to set the broker configuration file parameters. Those parameters will point to the configuration files that will be created for the broker. In the seventh step, I need to configure the listener in all the databases to have a static registrations of a service of format DB unique name underscore DGMGRL dot domain dot domain name. Copy the code from the text file, not from the PDF file. I will attach the text file to the lecture files. So please download it from there and use it to copy paste or you can edit them directly in the body session. This is copy of the listener.ora file that I'm going to copy the code from. Copy paste in the listener.ora of the primary database. We have to do the same in the standby database. The listener.ora file in the standby database has already static registration of the database. You remember we did that when we created the standby database and it was needed for the duplicate command to succeed in the RMAN. At this stage you can get rid of this registration or you can add the new static registration to this registration. I would rather keeping this one and add the broker static registration to it. So I will make a copy of only this part and paste it in the right position in the listener.ora file. Just under the SID list keyword. I will do some identification to make it more readable. And that's it. We have now two static registrations, one for the database and one for the broker. We have to restart the listener in both databases. We need now to open new sessions. In each session, we're gonna monitor the alert log of the databases and also a third session will be used to monitor the log file of the broker. The tail minus F command will be used to monitor those files. So I have created three sessions. Two of them are connected to the primary database and one of them is connected to the standby database. In the first session, I'm going to monitor the alert log of that primary database. The broker log file is not available at the moment. We are going to run this command later when the broker is up and running. I will just minimize this session. And run this command to monitor the alert log file in the standby database. Obviously this step is actually optional but it's highly recommended to do it so that you see in the background what's going on in the database. Also, monitoring the alert log file is useful if you have any issue or any error. 
because the alert log file will provide you more details about any errors or issues you may face. Now I'm going to start the broker by setting the parameter DG Broker Start in both databases. I'm just here verifying the parameter. At the moment, it is false. I'm going to set it to true in both databases. So first, I start with the primary database. Then I will set it in the standby database. I will take a copy of the value of the log archive destination parameter just for backup. And then on both databases, I will clear that parameter. So I have reset the log archive destination to in both databases. Now we need to start the DGMGRL utility and connect to the primary database. As you see, we connected to the database through the listener using Oracle network. It's highly recommended to connect to the database using this method. As the broker now is up and running, we are now good to monitor its log file. So this is the putty session that we created to connect to the primary database and monitor the broker log file. Again, we just monitor this log file to check the progress of the broker during its operation. Now we need to create the base configuration. Remember, we need to run this in the DGMGRL utility. As you can see, configuration AuraDB created with primary database AuraDB. You can now run show configuration command. As you can see in the output, we've got protection mode is maximum performance. The members in this configuration is at the moment only one member, which is AuraDB, and it is the primary database in our configuration. The fast start failover is disabled. We will enable it in a separate lecture. And finally, the configuration status is still disabled. Now we need to add the standby database to the broker configuration. When you run the show configuration command again, you can observe that the AuraDB underscore S2 is added as a member to the configuration, and it is the physical standby database. You can display the properties of the database by using the command show database verbose followed by the database name. As you can see from the output, we've got all the property values of that database. At the moment, AuraDB underscore S2 is a physical standby. Its state is offline. The real-time query is off. Also, you will observe all the other properties. You can notice that the log XPT mode is 
is set to asynchronous and this is the required setting for maximum performance protection mode If everything sounds good and all the property values are as we planned, we are now ready to run the last command, which is enable configuration. Enable configuration will make everything up and running. If it succeeds, it means the broker is up and running and our broker configuration procedure has finished. When you run the show configuration command again, you can observe that the configuration status is success, which means the broker is up and running and the data guard configuration is in operation. So to verify the broker operation, you need to run the show configuration command first. We have just done that. Then we can check the processes that have been created. I would run the PS command and look for the aura daemon process. As you can see, the Aura daemon process is up and running in the primary database system. I'm going now to check the value of the log archive destination 2. This parameter must have been set by the broker. As you can see, the log archive destination 2 has automatically been set by the broker. Actually, this parameter is now owned by the broker. You can also observe the alert log in the monitoring sessions. You can notice the commands that have been run by the broker in the primary database. You can observe the parameters that have been set by the broker. If you want to shut down the system, it is advised to shut down the redo apply process in the standby database. To do that in DGMGRL, you connect to the standby database and then and then run the command edit database or dbs2 set state equal to apply off. This command will shut down the redo apply process. After that, shut down the databases cleanly using srvctl command and then shut down the systems as root user let's test this command in the dgmgrl i connect to the standby database and change the state to apply off So that's it for this practice. We have successfully configured the broker in our data guard configuration. As you can see, the procedure might look long, but actually it's straightforward. You just follow the steps and you will be fine. Again, I would highly recommend configure the broker for any production data guard environment. Again, as always, if you have any question about this practice or any practices in this course, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.